Hey everybody, welcome in. Today we're going to take a look at uh, Eureka Math and Gage New York and Zern's Grade 4, Module 3, Lesson 9. And in this lesson, we want students to be able to multiply three and four digit numbers by a one digit number by using the standard algorithm. Now, the standard algorithm, some people refer to as the traditional way, and it's probably the way that your grandparent, if you're a student watching, your grandparents probably learned, um, maybe even your parents learned as well. Um, I know that I learned how to multiply this way. So um, if you ask some older folks for help, this is probably the way that they would show you. And if you're a teacher watching, this is probably the way that you learned how to multiply. So we're gonna start with number one. It says solve using each method. We're gonna use the partial products at first, then we'll go ahead over to the standard algorithm and then number two, and for most of the rest of the video, we'll be using that standard algorithm. But if we take a look at letter A, it says partial products and we're multiplying 34 times four. So if you want some help on how to multiply with partial products, check out my last video, lesson eight. Um, we really dive into how to multiply with partial products there. But what we would do to multiply here is we would start by multiplying our ones place. So we would multiply this four times four ones. So if you over here, I'll write four times four and four times four is equal to 16. And then we would multiply four times a three in the tens, which is 30. So I'm gonna write four times 30. And if you know four times three, you know four times 30. Four times 30 is equal to 120. And then we would add our partial products together. So 16 plus 120 in our ones place, six plus zero is six. One plus two is three and one plus nothing is one for a product of 136. Now for the standard algorithm, we kind of use, we kind of do this regrouping or we use regrouping over here in our tens place. So I'll kind of show you how that happens. We start by multiplying our ones by doing four times four, which is still 16, but we bring our six down and we're gonna regroup our one over top here. And a little trick I like to tell my students is put a plus symbol next to that because you're gonna add that one at the end. So then you do four times uh, four times three. So your ones, this four times the three in the tens. So four times three is 12 plus one is equal to 13. And again, we get 136, our answers match. Over here, Partial products, we'll multiply our ones place first. So we would do four times three. Actually, I should probably write it as three times four. Multiplication's commutative. So if I think about it as four times three or three times four, I'll get the same answer. Uh, three times four is equal to 12. Then I'm gonna multiply three times this two in the tens. So three times 20 is equal to 60. And then three times two in the hundreds or three times 200 is equal to 600. And then we go ahead and add up our partial products. So two plus zero plus zero is two. One plus six is seven. And six plus nothing is six to make 672. Using the standard algorithm, we start by multiplying this single digit by our ones place. So three times four is 12. So the two from 12 comes down and I regroup it over here with a plus one. Three times two is six, plus one is seven. Now, since that's a single digit number, we just bring our seven straight down. And then three times two is six to make 672, which matches my partial products. Got a couple problems to solve here. So solve using the standard algorithm. Three times, or we're gonna do 251 times three. So three times one is three. Three times five is 15. Bring down my five, carry my one over here to the hundreds place. Three times two is six, plus one is seven. Make a product of 753. 135 times six. Six times five is 30. So I bring down my zero from 30. And my three is going to be regrouped over here in the tens place. And again, plus three. So I do six times three, which is 18, plus three, 19, 20, 21. Bring down the one, carry the two over top here, plus two. 
Six times one is six, plus two is eight. C, 304 times nine. Nine times four is 36, so I bring down my six, carry my plus three over here. Nine times zero is zero, plus three is three, and then nine times three is 27 to make 2,736. Now, since I don't have another digit over here in the thousands place, I would bring down that two and the seven because we would really regroup those uh, 2,700s for two thousands and then our two ends up in the thousands place. So we just bring it straight down. 405 times four, four times five is 20. Bring down my zero, carry my two over to the tens place. Four times zero, is zero plus two is two and four times four is 16 i don't have another digit to regroup it over to so we just bring the 16 straight down for a product of 1620 316 times five five times six is 30 bring down my zero carry my three over here five times one is five plus three is eight and then five times three is 15 for a product of 1,580. And letter F, we have 392 times six. Six times two is 12. Bring down my two, carry my one up top here. Nine times six is 54, plus one is 55. So bring down the five, carry the five over here. Six times three is 18, plus five, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that comes down here and just add our comma to separate our thousands place from our hundreds place. It's really important that we think about this in terms of this single digit number times each of these uh, digits here in the three digit number. Um, I've seen some students in the past who want to do like two times six and then they kind of get confused because they think the two is what we would multiply by each of these numbers, but it's the single digit number that we're multiplying uh, by each of the number, or excuse me, each of the digits in our three digit number. Number three, a uh, little bit wordy. It says the product of seven and 86 is blank. Well, we need to know what a product is. The product is an answer to a multiplication problem. So this tells me that I need to multiply 786. So when I need to set it up myself, it's in your best interest to put your two digit number up top here and your single digit number down below. So seven times six is 42, bring down the two, carry the four. And seven times eight for me was always my most difficult multiplication problem, but I think I have it now. Seven times eight is 56 plus four is 60 to make 602. Now over here we have, it's still gonna be a multiplication problem, but we use that comparison language where we see nine times as many as 457. This is still a multiplication problem. So we'll do 457 times nine. We're gonna have a decent amount of regrouping in this one. Nine times seven is 63. So I bring down my three, carry my six up top here. Nine times five is 45 plus six, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. Bring down my one, carry the five up top here above the four. Nine times four is 36 plus five, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, to make a product of 4,113. Number five, we start to dig into some word problems here. So when we take a look at a word problem and we want to uh, decipher if it's a multiplication problem, we need to be on the lookout for what these numbers represent. In multiplication, one number will represent the number of groups, the other factor will represent the size of the groups, but in a word problem, they're kind of disguised. So you need to think about what these numbers represent. And we see things like bags or um, sometimes we'll even see the word groups. Okay, those would suggest the number of groups. The other number may suggest the size of the group. This one says, Jashawn wants to make five airplane propellers. All right, so five airplane propellers. 
And the propeller is sort of what goes on the front of an airplane that makes it go. He needs 18 centimeters of wood for each propeller. So when we see that word each, that is a big indication that this is multiplication. 18 centimeters of wood for each propeller. So how many centimeters of wood would he use? In this example, five is my number of groups because we're making five airplane propellers. 18 is the size of the group because every airplane propeller is going to be 18 centimeters of wood. So we have five groups of 18. So I'm going to use a tape diagram here to illustrate. One, two, three, four, five groups. So each one of these boxes represents one airplane propeller that he's going to build. Every group is going to be 18 centimeters. So five groups of 18. So I definitely need to multiply in this case. Eighteen times five. We'll use our standard algorithm. Five times eight is forty. Bring down the zero. Carry the four up top here. Five plus, or excuse me, five times one is five. Plus four. Five plus four is nine to make ninety centimeters. So to finish this off with a sentence, we could say. Uh, Jashawn will need 90 centimeters of wood. Number six, one game system costs $238. How much will four game systems cost? So in this case, four is going to be my number of groups. Every game system is going to be its own group, and the cost of one game system is $238. So we know the size of one group, so we would multiply the size of one group times the amount of groups that we have, which is going to be four. So we're going to do 238 times four. If I wanted to use a tape diagram to illustrate this, I would have four groups. of 238. Standard algorithm, four times eight is 32. So I bring down my two, plus three up top here in my tens. Four times three is 12, plus three is 15. So bring down my five. Carry the one up top here. Four times two is eight plus one is nine. So four game systems would cost $952. That's what I'll write for my sentence. Four game systems would cost $952. Number seven, we actually have a two-step word problem, so we really need to pay attention to the language here. Number seven says, a small bag of chips weighs 48 grams. A large bag of chips weighs three times as much. So we see that comparison language, three times as much for a large bag. So we have small bags of chips, and we have large bags of chips. And a large bag is three times as much as a small bag. Our question is, how much will seven large bags of chips weigh? So don't just look for your numbers and multiply them. Okay, If you did that, you would do 48 times seven if we kind of left out this sentence here in the middle of this word problem. First thing we need to do is we need to figure out how much one large bag of chips weighs, and we know that it's three times as much as a small bag. So a small bag would be 48, and again, this is for a small bag, is 48 grams, but a large bag is three times as much. So that means we need to do 48 times three. So three equal groups of 48. This entire tape diagram shows uh, how many grams a large bag weighs. 
So first things first, I need to multiply 48 times 3. 3 times 8 is 24. Bring down my 4. Carry my 2 up top here. 3 times 4 is 12. Plus 2 is 144. Now 144 is the amount of grams of a large bag of chips. This is not the end of the problem. Our question that we need to solve for is how much will seven large bags of chip weighs. So 144 grams is the size of one large bag. Now we need to show how many seven large bags would be. So now we have seven equal groups of 144. Three groups. Four groups, didn't make my tape diagram large enough. Five groups, six groups, and I need another group. So now I will do 144 times seven. Seven times four is 28, bring down my eight, carry my two. 7 times 4 in the tens is 28 plus 2. So 28 plus 2 would be 30. Bring down my 0. Carry my 3 up top over here to the hundreds. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 3 is 10 to make 1,008. So to put that in a sentence to finish off this word problem, we could say 7 large bags of chips would be 1,008 grams. If you're liking this content, please feel free to drop a like, drop a comment. I'd love to hear from some of the uh, viewers. Um, and if there's something that you would like to see me work out, please, uh, you know, drop that in the comments, like and subscribe. Um, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.